I noticed that in the last session it was an all-male panel, and this session it's all-female and me. I'm not quite sure what to make of it. Anyway, let me take a few minutes to try and talk about uh, national nutrition information systems. So why is this important for community-based SAM treatment? I think we've heard a bit in the last uh, day or two uh, about some of the prevailing programming trends and pushes. Uh, to expand SAM management treatment in country, and more actors are taking this on, both NGO, government, to integrate SAM management into national and, and government systems, and to link SAM management to put the preventative action side and the stunting agenda. And I think these trends and pushes are also then mirrored in the inf information side. So there's more actors, more information to compile at a country level. There's a need to advocate with government to take on uh, the information component and then also to link the different streams of information, so SAM and other intervention information. So we need to understand how SAM data from a wide range of sources comes together at a national level, and then we need to see how the SAM information fits within these broader efforts to collect, analyze, and use information. So I need to thank Saul, actually, at this point, because I've stolen his diagram and added to it. But the, this is sort of one way of trying to conceptualize the different components of an information system. And it's certainly not comprehensive, but the idea is to generate some thinking around it. So on the situation and early warning side, you have your GAM-SAM prevalence rate, surveillance data, micronutrient status data, breastfeeding uh, rates. Uh, we've talked a bit about nutrition-sensitive interventions, so also it would be good to kind of bring in that data, food security, health, and, and wash information. On the delivery side, there's obviously the routine information, SAM admissions, IYCF counselling, uh, geographic coverage information, and on the performance side, uh, SAM performance indicators got through routine data um, and intervention coverage data. So for this presentation, and really I think in the conference, we've been mainly focusing on these elements of data. So this is a kind of generic example of a nutrition information reporting uh, flow in a country, building off the previous slide. So the situational impact data is gathered through surveys and surveillance, fed into the uh, HMIS and up through sort of the government channels, and UN uh, NGO channels. On the program delivery side, you have your vertical programs often, and, and quite often CMAM stands apart uh, from those. Uh, also feeding up their various uh, singular channels to the district, province, and national levels. Some of this is captured uh, also in the HMAS, but you'll notice the red arrow for, for CMAM. Very, very few indicators are included normally in a national HMAS. And then on the pro program performance side, you have your uh, coverage survey uh, data, if that exists, uh, your knowledge, attitudes, and practices uh, surveys. That's then feeding uh, up again. And then the big question and the real point of this slide is, how is all this data kind of coming together at a central level? And what are we doing to support this? So what do we know about country SAM reporting systems? So last year, UNICEF undertook an exercise to, to map uh, data globally, and as of 2012, 51 countries were claiming to have CMAM, SAM reporting systems at the national level. You'll see from this graph that the information flow is coming up from slightly different levels and channels in different countries, so sometimes from the district, sometimes from the health facility level, sometimes from implementing partners directly, and also at the regional level. And then in terms of who's managing these systems, well, you'll see that uh, governments taking on quite a big responsibility for managing these, and also UNICEF's uh, really supporting government to do so. A couple of country examples, and Emily already kind of uh, spoke to, to Pakistan, but it's a good example of how CMAM output data is coming together at a national level. And then Vietnam, some challenges in terms of bringing uh, the nutrition information streams of data together. Quick overview on the program context in Pakistan. So UNICEF continues to be a, a major supporter uh, of nutrition programming, and particularly for CMAM. Other main interventions include uh, micronutrient uh, supplementation and IYCF messaging. But it's worth noting there's a changing landscape in Pakistan with the government taking on more ownership of the programming, uh, increased non-UNICEF-supported NGO activity, and an increased shift from emergency to development work. 
So just to give a flavor again, uh, structure does per the previous slide of, of what kind of elements are contained within a, a national system as we might think about it. So on the situational side, you have your survey data through the mix or through uh, the flood affected nutrition survey. On the delivery side, you have uh, the DHIS uh, at the district level that the government supports, uh, the national program reporting, the vertical program reporting through the government. The NIS, the Nutrition Information System, which UNICEF supports, the MRP, which Emily mentioned, uh, WFP supply system, and then also um, on the performance side, this is, this is uh, reflected also. For the purpose of this presentation, I'm just going to focus on the UNICEF uh, managed NIS. So you can see here, I think, uh, the strong sort of reporting flow structure that is currently in place in one of the provinces in Pakistan in uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. So you can see that um, at each CMAM site, uh, there is a process for taking the paper form to the nutrition information assistant at the district level who feeds it into the computerized system and then it's automatically replicated up to the provincial level to the UNICEF information management officer. This, is, this slide kind of reflects a different cut of, of the previous one. So you can see that there are sort of a few different strands of the data coming from the NGO partners on the left hand side here. And then the, the government uh, also reporting directly to their uh, Department of Health at the provincial level, and then how that's coming together. In fact, UNICEF is playing a, a strong role in bringing that together at the provincial level. Just to give a flavor of what the NIS system looks like, you have uh, individual admissions forms, exit forms, the ability to uh, output uh, admissions reports, and then kind of an interesting analytical uh, tool in the bottom right corner here to do some sort of program analysis, uh, looking at uh, admissions trends and, and so forth. Uh, while I think uh, the experience in Pakistan has been extremely positive, I think there are some challenges also. At the macro level, there are some standardization issues. So currently only two of the four provinces uh, that, that implement CMAM are, are using this. I think there's some issues around utilization of the information that's coming out. And, speaking to the program staff, they weren't exactly sure what they could get out of the system, so there's a bit of a communication breakdown there. And then sustainability, uh, you'll have seen in the previous slide, it takes a lot of human resources to make this happen, and, and obviously that's quite resource heavy. On the technical side, there are still some content gaps, there are quality issues, so what's in the system isn't necessarily reflected um, on the ground, and some IT technical issues in terms of bugs and data heaviness and so forth. To flick quickly to the Vietnam example, so again, uh, to give a flavor of the programming context, uh, the government leads uh, nutrition programming. There's a big focus on uh, development and stunting. And the two main programs addressing, uh, from the government perspective, uh, nutrition uh, needs, that's the Nutrition PEMC program, that's the protein uh, uh, oh, energy malnutrition control program, and the maternal and child health program. There's some NGO activity also, uh, the IYCF franchise program. And then uh, in 2009, uh, the, and they call it the IMAM pilot, uh, was uh, initiated by government and with UNICEF support. Now, I just want to pause here and, and give a caveat that uh, what I'm about to show is relatively complicated. It's supposed to be. When we spoke to the uh, ministry in Vietnam, they told us we needed a PhD in five years to understand the reporting flow structure, and I'm attempting to condense it into three slides, so please bear with me. So at the village level, the village health worker collects individual data, compiles into a monthly summary. Looking specifically at the nutrition information, uh, the PEMP program the, uh, includes RYCF and vitamin A data and maternal child health data. There's a meeting monthly at the commune level, and then there's a mon uh, monthly meeting at the district level, and you can see already that the information strands are beginning to split out. So some, uh, some of the information is going to the nutrition focal point. Some, some of the other information, including the IMAM pilot, is going to the planning focal point. Pick it up at the district level again, just to uh, add the warning, it's kind of complex. <clears throat> So you can see also now that it's becoming uh, sort of uh, even more kind of stratified. So vitamin A uh, data is going to one part of the house in the province. IOSCF data is going to another part of the, of the house in the, at the provincial level. Uh, IMAM data also is, is um, streaming down to, to the reproductive health center. 
And then just to make it even more complicated, you have your inpatient data also coming into the Reproductive Health Centre. But as the IMAN program, in fact, gets integrated into the national program, that is going to change. And that will go to a different part of the house in the provincial level. And then finally, what's the, what's the kind of feedback loop? So, I mean, it's, it's a mess, and intentionally so. Finally, we pick it up at the provincial level. And you can see again how the different strands are going out to the different departments uh, within the MOH, the Nutrition Institute of Nutrition, the PEM program, the Maternal Child Health program, and so forth. So it's all getting sort of slowly fed into the MOH, but of course, within the MOH, there's fragmentation, uh, not necessarily clear lines of communication and coordination. So we've got to find a way somehow of kind of breaking down those barriers. Final two slides here. So this slide is kind of speaking to what the theme of the conference kind of has been pointing to progress, dot, 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 but. So we've seen big advances in coherence, uh, quality and standardization uh, of data generation, by which I mean collection and reporting. On the data analysis side, there are some really interesting products available. And uh, for those of you sort of familiar with the Sudan context, the Darfur update, I think, is a, is a best practice. And the nutrition cluster update in Pakistan also. Uh, bringing together sort of data more widely from across nutrition interventions and even beyond the food security uh, nutrition analysis unit in Somalia has done some really interesting work. And uh, please have Robert in the room. Uh, he's done a lot of work on the DevInfo platform in West Africa. And then finally, on the utilization side, which we haven't really, I haven't really spoken about, but just to flag uh, a lot of good practice around utilization for advocacy and fundraising, and even for program adaptation in, in Kenya, uh, they use the information to adjust their targets, strategies, funding needs, and so forth. But you can see the, the buts in each category. I think there's still some way to go towards um, the coherence around reporting to increase the quality. There's issues around frequencies, reporting lines, indicators, and so forth. There's a need for clarity of roles uh, and capacity uh, strengthening around the analysis side. And then, of course, the translation to program adaptation and use uh, is still a challenge. So my implications and next steps. I think I can broadly categorize these into two things, advocacy and technical work. So there's a need to advocate both for bringing CMAM reporting together and also linking CMAM reporting to other nutrition reporting there's a need to continue to advocate uh, with government for their ownership, their buy-in uh, national level, and to build capacity. But also, there is, of course, some technical work to do around standardization of indicators, forms, to develop tools, technology, to strengthen uh, integrated data analysis. And my final point, I think, is that this represents a big challenge uh, for us, but I think also represents uh, a big opportunity uh, for us as a community to get together, to work together on this and to improve.